pretty hard to talk about the West without talking about Indians. They were part of it, sometimes the most important part. Now, I don't hold with the argument that the only good Indians are dead Indians. On the other hand, I never went along with the bleeding hearts who thought an Indian was a saint just because he didn't know any better. Of course, civilization did affect the Indians some. Some of them settled down on reservations and missions and turned out right peaceful and friendly. But some of them, especially the Comanches, stuck to their quaint, unspoiled, natural way of life. The Comanches were just about the nastiest critters in the Southwest. In time, I not only grew to respect them, I learned to downright dislike them. And that's kind of strange, me having that strong a dislike, because well, generally, I'm the most friendly fellow you meet. Destry. I'm on the move a lot, looking for a fellow who framed me and sent me to prison. I'm not exactly bitter about it, but, well, I'm looking forward to the day I get my hands on good old Charlie Bent and bruise him somewhat. I've got in mind, though, I ran across a little unforeseen difficulty, which is the very worst kind. I had word that Bent was down near the New Mexico line, and there was a long haul there from Dakota Territory. By the time I pulled into what passed for civilization, my horse was worn out, I had no money, no prospects, and no idea where to start looking. The man who named that town Extremity must have known I was coming. I made it. I filled that old inside straight. That's twice today. You fellas might as well hand over your money. I got a sign on them cards today. I don't want you to get the idea that I take advantage of my fellow man, but anybody that likes inside straights, well, that's about like finding money in the street. Howdy. Howdy. What did you give me for the heart? Sympathy. How about $15? How about three? A dead horse worth more than that. We're selling a horse right out from underneath the saddle in a big hurry. That's, uh, that's gonna cost you. You was my father. I couldn't take less than 10. Six. You got yourself a horse. Mind if I leave my gear with you? Oh, no. Hey, uh, how come you wind up with a horse like this? Well, maybe mine broke down as best I could get. Maybe I was fool enough to switch horses middle of a coal mine at midnight. Take your choice. Hey, you know, I like you. I'm gonna give you a job. Don't need a job. Just came in some money. Oh. <laughs> Chicken feed. Chicken feed. What I got in mind pays $70 for a week's work. $70? Wages like that, it must be illegal, immoral, or dangerous. It involves some form of homicide. Well, just at your own pleasure. You're under, you're under no obligation in that regard. All you got to do is uh, deliver them Bibles in that there wagon. Bibles? Uh-huh. hundred of them. To a missionary fellow by the name Fairhaven. Where's he? Oh, kind of south of here, about three days. Yeah, thanks just the same. I found myself a fellow likes inside straights. I think I'll stick with him. I did it! My third inside straight. I told you I got a sign on them cars. $50. You said 70 Oh, well, that was when you still had money and prospects. Not having any, naturally. It's That's gotta, gotta cost. cost you. Well, I went, fat and happy, to deliver these Bibles, trying to put out of my mind the unpleasant suspicion when a man pays that kind of money for this kind of job, 
There has to be something wrong with it. I'm Rebecca Fairhaven. My name's Destry. You won't need that here. Reverend Fairhaven? You are most welcome, sir. Translated into the Indian tongue. A special edition, printed at my own expense. Pity the Comanches can't read. Oh, we'll teach them. I see, Reverend. I'm not an ordained minister, you know. No, indeed. I was in trade in Massachusetts. But I felt the call to spread the gospel among the heathen. So I uh, sold everything and came out here. I have almost despaired, Mr. Destry, many times in the months that we have been here. But they came to us three weeks ago. The church will be finished in a few days. Now the Bibles have arrived. Our prayer meeting tonight should be filled to overflowing. This is the happiest day of my life, Mr. Destry. your babes in the woods. A hundred yards away, 50 or 60 Comanche braves were whooping it up around the war drums. And Brother Fairhaven was waiting for them to come to a prayer meeting. From the sounds coming from the Comanche encampment, we'd be combing Indians out of our hair before long, if we had any hair left by then. When we distributed the gifts, as many as seven or eight of the women attended. Uh, I'm sure tomorrow night... Mr. Fairhaven, I'm not much for giving advice. Speak your mind, Mr. Dastry. Get out of here, just as fast as you can. <laughs> Never. 
Well, then at least let me take your daughter back with me in the morning. I wouldn't dream of it. Anybody gets close to those devils gets hurt sooner or later. We are not afraid, Mr. Destry. We have come in peace. They probably think you're out of your mind. What do you want to bet some buck up there doesn't already have his eye on your daughter's hair? I see you have the common misconception. Rousseau teaches that the noble savage in his state of nature... Don't stake your life on him, Mr. Fairhaven. He never saw a savage. You read Rousseau? Cover to cover. He was a fool. I wouldn't have thought that a wagon driver would be so well read. Oh, I had time to do a lot of reading once. In school? Texas State Penitentiary. You are a convict? Former convict. Naturally, I wouldn't expect a man of uh, violent uh, background to... Uh... Who said anything about violence? <laughs> for the record, I was convicted of embezzlement. Also, for the record, I was innocent. Most former convicts say something of the sort, I understand. You don't believe me. Yet you take those devils on faith. It's curious. Good night, Mr. Destry. Child. I'm sorry, I was a little jumpy, I guess. Those savages are more civilized than you are. Hope you're right, Miss Fairhaven. For your sake. I hadn't meant to doze off, but towards morning I did. It was the sudden stillness that woke me. A drum stopped. When Indians stop drumming and yelling, that usually means they're all ready to do what they were drumming and yelling about. And there they were, getting ready to start the day off right with a barbecue. faithful servant. The heathen are amongst us. The wolves have descended upon the lambs. Have you deserted me? Save me, I beseech you. Save me. Stay their hand. Father. I'll speak to them. Make them stop. Make them stop. Get back here. Get away. Listen to me. Get myself masked and help me, man. or you.
We spent a nervous morning under a pile of dried brush while half the Comanche nation hunted for us. They finally must have decided we were cremated in the cabin, so they left. They broke camp and rode off screaming for blood. I buried Fairhaven up on a hill that afternoon. I'm sorry. Thank you. I don't guess they'll be back for a bit. May as well be comfortable. Maybe they didn't get all the horses. I'll, I'll see if I can round up a couple. You'll be all right as long as you stay put. You understand? Already. We can't take the wagon, Miss Fairhaven. The only way we can carry the Bibles, Mr. Destry. There's no point in taking them. On the contrary, most of them are in quite good condition. The Comanches all around here, a lot of them. The wagon is heavy and noisy. We can't take it. Bibles in the Comanche tongue are very scarce, Mr. Destry. They are also extremely expensive. So we'll just have to make out with the wagon. Now look, going on horseback, fast and quiet, we have one chance, just one little chance to get back to Extremity. On that wagon, we wouldn't make it five miles. I have nothing but these Bibles, Mr. Desty. They're all I have left of my father's work. You will kindly hitch up the wagon. Will you get some sense in your head, lady, and climb up on that horse? We're wasting time. I will not leave without my Bibles. I'm not driving any wagons for a bunch of wild Comanches, and that's fast. Blessing will have such fine weather for the trip. Wish it was raining. There's no need to be unpleasant, Jesse. If it was raining, the Comanches be holed up. They're miles away by now. I don't see a sign of them. Yeah, that's what bothers me. You mean you wouldn't be worried if you could see them? No, that's not what I mean. I must say, I don't understand you. All right. I don't understand myself. You're a violent, ungodly man, but I shall hope that you are a man of your word. 
I said I'd try. Yeah! Something by the name of Purse Glove over that way? Not anymore. We'll stay here for the night. Very well. I saved some blankets. I have a flitch of bacon and some beans and coffee and some biscuits we'll make out. Just the biscuits tonight. Can't have a fire. We didn't get rid of that wagon, it was bound to get rid of us. And since it wouldn't break down on its own, I figured to help it along by losing the double tree pin. Got some bad news for you, Miss Fairhaven. Wagon's broken. Are you sure? Certainly you can fix it. Right not. Looks all right to me. In here, hold the double key together. All that jumping. Must fall it out. Could you put a stick in it or something? It wouldn't last a minute. You seem to be doing so well. It's not so bad. We still got the horses. You can hide the wagon. More than likely, you can come back and get the Bibles and everything's quiet. No. I shall pray for help. But later, you must be hungry, Mr. Destry. Thank you. My father always said grace. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for the food we're about to eat. We thank you for our safe deliverance this day from the hands of the savages. We pray that you will show your servant, Mr. Destry, how to fix the wagon so that we may carry your gospel safely with us. And we ask that you receive unto yourself the spirit of my father. Amen. Amen. Mm. Good biscuits. Thank you. You're going to make some man uh, very lucky one of these days. I really hadn't thought about it. You should be going back to your folks in the East, huh? There's nobody back there. No family? No, there was just my father. You got any money? Maybe. I don't think so. Father always took care of that. He had a good bit of money. He always tithed. Ever since I was a little girl, he wanted to do more to convert the savages. We worked for it and planned for it and studied. And then last year, he took everything and we came on out here. What are you going to do, Miss Fairhaven? Start over again. I have his Bibles. I can't turn my back on what he tried to do with them. I just let him die for no good purpose at all. He was the kindliest, most gentle. And now I... Mr. Haven, you had a pretty trying day. This will do you good. Never touch spirit. I won't add to your worries, Miss Fairhaven. Well, we'd better turn in. Where will you sleep? I'll sit up for a while. Have a hot pin. Yes, I will. Makes you more comfortable. You hold on to it.
remember the promises that are made us in the fifth book of Matthew. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I think your father was pure in heart, Miss Fairhaven. Thank you, Mr. Destry. Good night, Miss Fairhaven. Good night. I have misjudged you very badly. Why couldn't you have broken down on your own accord? This fair haven, if I, if I told you once, I told you ten times. I took that pin out last night. I put it back because I felt sorry for you. It was, it was, it was just, just plain simple-minded. There's nothing more. The Lord moves in mysterious ways, Mr. Destry. Perhaps he moves in you. Nothing of the sort. I deny it. Plus the scripture. Last night you needed that. Now don't make anything more of it. Perhaps it embarrasses you. But I know you're a kindly man. It's not at all far from being godly. I never argue with anybody saying nice things about me. But I draw the line of being the answer to a prayer. fresh scouts at his belt. If we'd been traveling on the road, we wouldn't have had a chance. Even so, it was going to be touch and go. Fortunately, I never traveled through Indian country without being near a friendly gully. What is it? Comanche's coming his way. one of them. He's a very nice man. Very nice man? This isn't a summer jaunt through the countryside waving to your friends. Maybe he can help us. Those are scalps they have on their lands. It's human scalps. Well, I don't believe he would harm me. Well, you believe any fool thing you want. Just as long as you do as you're told. I assure you, there will be no further occasion for you to put your hands on me. 
and I will thank you to keep a proper distance between us for the remainder of this journey. Could eat for the morning. Just as well, it's so stale. Mr. Destry. Hmm? I don't believe you had any sleep last night. Um, I dozed off towards morning. I'm all right. I'm not. You're going to bed right now. I'll stand guard. Well, I could use a couple of hours. You think you feel up to it? Of course. Yeah. I'd rather not, thank you. Keep your ears open. I'll uh, call you if I hear anything. All right, Mr. Destin. Tail nag, somebody bit on the bay. I need some more water, Mr. Dusty. Well, come ahead. Feeling bad enough? <laughs> yeah. Sure does make one feel fine. I can mend this. Oh, don't bother. No bother at all, Mr. Destry. 
Go on in. Do your world of good. I'll be by the fire, shaving. Go on. through a Comanche raid. That's something to tell our grandchildren about. You there? I wouldn't have given two pins for a chance this couple of days ago. something you do all the time. No. Your wife? <laughs> no. I could have sworn each finger had an eye at the end of it to see what it was doing. That's just long practice. You know the Song of Solomon? Oh, indeed. You should. My father held it was not entirely proper reading for a young girl. It's very beautiful. Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet, and thy speech is comely. Thy temples are like a piece of pomegranate within thy locks. You're not familiar with it? How beautiful are thy feet with shoes, O oh princess daughter. The joints of thy... Oh, no, not that part. <laughs> You're a hypocrite. Well, I was curious. I, I had to read it to see what it was all about. Were you satisfied? Just being curious again? Not, a, not all together. No, not all together. Enjoy something unless you feel a, a little shameful about it.
killed him? Yeah. Oh. You had to do it. No, no. Look at it this way. You saved a life at the same time. This makes no difference. Sure it does. But my life... See what I can do for you. That would be improper. Get you pretty hard. It's out of the question. I'll be all right. Even so, I think... I don't, and I'm the best judge. Um, better get some sleep anyway. I'll see if I can round up those horses in the morning. Find hiding a hair the other horse. Then I'll have to leave the wagon. Perhaps someone will find them who is more worthy to put them to good use. obviously busted up inside. Best thing I could do was get her to town and the doctor as soon as possible. The way she was growing weaker, I didn't know if it was going to be soon enough. Take a while, but maybe I can find us something to eat. I'm not hungry. You sure? Well, with any luck, we ought to be in town by this time tomorrow. You ever been to San Francisco? No. New Orleans? No. I've never been anywhere except uh, home and here. But I've got a lot of places to show you. I have a feeling there are a lot of things you haven't seen or done. I'll have to make it up to you. Not important. Sure it's important. Saying things, doing things. That's why we're alive. I've done all the important things. You haven't even scratched it. Yes, I have. All we have is right now, this minute. Everything else is a memory or an expectation. I suppose. So, when you kiss once, you have all the kisses there are. And if you entertain certain feelings just one day, it's as good as if you were had them all your life, so you mustn't trouble yourself to try and give me anything more. I hadn't thought of it as trouble. More like the greatest pleasure I've ever known. Dear Mr. Destry. You're still cold. I think I'll sleep a little bit. Dear Mr. Destry.
Rebecca. Rebecca. Several months ago, I thought at the time she was far too frail for frontier living. Yeah, she was. She was hurt worse than she'd admit, too. Hey, you know that river about 18 miles south of town? I know the place. Well, there's a wagon load of Bibles down there. Thought you might like to have them. Oh, thank you. They're in the Comanche tongue. Oh. Well, I, I fear her father was not a very practical man. We could do with a few more impractical men like that, Reverend. Wouldn't hurt any at all. I'll give you this here animal and we'll call her even Steve. Fair enough. Ain't you gonna complain about his generally sorry condition? Nope. You ain't going to hector me about his his way back and, and them cow hocks and, and, the, and the length of his teeth? Nope, not as long as you get me to the next town. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't guarantee it. I wouldn't advise you bouncing up and down on him more if you can help. Say, hey, uh, not to be personal, but I can't help remarking you, your spirit seems to be thrown. Well, I'll tell you what it is, Mr. Henderson. You see, one day, one day just isn't good enough. I don't follow you. No, I didn't expect you to. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. 